Good morning. I welcome you all to our virtual VE Day, which marks the end of the Second World War in Europe 75 years ago. The nation had been at war since 1939, and the long anticipated news of peace resulted in spontaneous celebrations right across the UK. A national holiday was declared and people from all walks of life came together to mark the historic moment. The anniversary commemorates a highly significant milestone for our nation. And our elected members felt it was really important that despite the unprecedented times that we find ourselves in, that we did all that we could to remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Today we pause to reflect on those that give so much, and in some cases everything, to protect the freedom and the way of life that we enjoy today, and to say thank you. We are currently in the grip of a global pandemic, and what has come to light once again is the resilience, the sense of community, and the bravery of the people of Northern Ireland, as we all join together to fight this enemy as one. It is true, we have all had to make a lot of sacrifices during the last number of weeks, but it falls to insignificance when we compare that to the sacrifices made by our parents, our grandparents and our great-grandparents during the Second World War. Let us come together throughout this day as we remember them. I hope and trust that you will stay with us throughout the day and follow our packed programme of events which you can follow on Council's social media and website. 75 years on from the guns falling silent in Europe, Mid and East Antrim will commemorate all those on the front line as well as those who were so critical to supporting the efforts at home. Today will be a cause for celebration and to mark our victory against Terranry and our nation's triumphs following what was undoubtedly its darkest hour. I want to thank all who have played such an important role in helping us create our virtual VE Day. I'd like to begin with our Lord Lieutenant of County Antrim, Mr David McCorkle, and the Tri Services, the Royal Navy, the Army and the RAF. I'd like to thank the Mayor, the Deputy Mayor, Aldermen and Councillors of Mid and East Antrim, and all who took part in this video and gave of their time and their efforts. Finally, I'd like to thank you for inviting us into your home to share with you the commemoration and the celebration of victory in Europe. We really want you to be part of this and we would invite you to share your memories, your photographs, video clippage and your thoughts with us throughout the weekend. Please continue to stay safe and take comfort in the knowledge that we will meet again, and soon I hope.
I want to send a special message to the people of Mid and East Antrim who are joining together with the support of the local council, as are so many others across Northern Ireland, to commemorate and celebrate VE Day. And as we remember the sacrifice of so many on the front line and at home 75 years ago, we should take a moment to think about the heroes today in our community who are sacrificing so much to save lives. We owe them all an enormous debt of gratitude. Victory in Europe Day has a new meaning for all of us. This is our moment in history with a formidable adversary, but we will come through it together. Hi guys, the borough of Mid and East Antrim, Northern Ireland. How are you? And welcome to VE Day 75. Here in the kitchen, how the devil are you all? Hope you're all well. Victory in Europe, fantastic. And victory against this virus, that's what we want to do. Right, let me introduce myself. I am Mike Beaton, uh, Royal Marine Commando. Okay, and I'm gonna do a little bit of cooking for you. A bit of a 1945 feel, but food that we are still using today. Okay, so picture the scene first and foremost. Okay, I'm in my kitchen. I'm on an iPhone 6 because I can't afford a Vero one. My iPhone is tipped up against an ironing board and we're cooking in the kitchen for you. Life is absolutely mad at this time, but I hope you're well. Bank holiday weekend, okay? Let's celebrate victory in Europe. What an occasion. And one day we'll be celebrating a victory against the virus, no doubt about it. Keep safe, keep well, guys, all those key messages. Anyway, what I'm gonna do for you today, I'm gonna do corned beef hash. Okay, which is very simple. Okay, this must admit, it's a dish I haven't done in years. Okay, and I'm also going to do spam fritters. During the war, spam fritters were used, okay, instead of fish. Okay, done in batter, and that's exactly what I'm going to do, and I'm going to shallow fry. But first and foremost, let's go into the corned beef hash, and maybe something you can do this, uh, do this at home as well at the same time. This is one take, so if it goes wrong, it goes wrong. Okay, so, so far, I've got some white onions in my pan. Okay, and I fry them all till they get nice and brown. Okay, and a little bit of rapeseed oil. Okay, those onions will take about three or four minutes. Then from there, I'm using some tin, to, uh, tin potatoes like they did in the war. I'll slice some up. Okay, and I've just run my knife through the rest of these tin potatoes, guys. Okay, slice them up. Okay, here we are, victory in Europe. Okay, rock and roll, live the dream, all those key messages. Okay, just chunking these up, guys. The important thing is, over the bank holiday weekend, okay, obviously celebrate the victory in Europe, but get in the kitchen, okay, get cooking as well at the same time. In goes those potatoes like so, okay, and we'll give them a twirl. I'm going to do both dishes at the same time. As a guy, I can multitask, but only just, but not all the time. Okay, give them a little twirl in the pan. Okay, we're going to add a little bit more oil in there, okay, so it doesn't stick to the pan like so. In goes the oil, okay, this is a dish you certainly did back there in 1945. Victory in Europe, okay, sorted. Hope you're all okay down there in Mid and East Antrim in Northern Ireland. The sun is shining, the land is green, fan dabby dozy. Okay, that's going in there like so. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper, a little bit of seasoning, sprinkle that in. Remember with salt and pepper you can always add, but you can't take away. So that's ticking along quite nicely there. Okay, let me just do my hands. As you can see, one take in the kitchen. We're not moving anything around. Okay, give that a nice twirl in there. And then from there, guys, okay, I'm gonna get my corned beef. Corned beef, okay, I love a bit of corn dog, but how do you get out of the tin using that key? Absolutely impossible. Okay, so fight your way through that. But once you have got it out, okay, nice big chunk of corned beef, and all we're gonna do, okay, put massive big chunks in there, okay, because that will break down once it's in the pan. Okay, look at that, nice big chunks of corn dog, guys. Okay, get that in there. Okay, job done. Okay, massive in there, lovely jubbly. Okay, give that twirl in the pan. Don't be frightened to break down the corned beef a little bit as well. Okay, want it a little bit mashy. Okay, get that in there, get that cooking. Right, okay, let me just do my hands again, guys, here. Okay, in my kitchen. Rock and roll. Okay, what are we in now? Week six, okay, of lockdown. It's absolutely crazy, but we've got to do it. Okay, so over here, 1945, spam footers instead of using fish. Massive shortage of food across the uh, United Kingdom and Northern Ireland, uh, okay, and places. Okay, so a lot of, play, a lot of uh, 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 restaurants and fast food, obviously, went to the old spam. Now, we all like the spam, 
Okay, spam in a can. Again, get it out, it's a whole different message. Okay, but we've got the can and we've got the spam out. And all I've done is sliced it into about eight slices like so. I've made my batter. Okay, and all my batter consists of here. It's a big mug full of flour, if you can find any flour. Okay, a bit of milk, an egg, a bit of salt and pepper. Okay, and I've thickened it up. Okay, so it's a nice, okay, consistency. So it's quite thick. I'm going to shallow fry these. Okay, get me let rid of that. Okay, I've got more oil in there. We've got a little bit of smoke as well. Okay, be very careful when you're shallow frying, guys, as well. You don't want to burn yourself. But then all we're going to do, we're going to get the spam in there. Get our hands in amongst the food. Obviously, as long as our hands are clean, everything's okay. And then straight into the pan it will go. Okay, load of, there's the batter mix. Okay, two things at once here. The corned beef's cracking along, guys. Okay, hope you're all well out there in Northern Ireland. Great part of the world. Okay, get that in there like so. Move the batter to one side. Quick wash of the hands, guys and girls. Okay, back to the corned beef and give that a twirl. Okay, so the, the spam fritters over here, they're gonna take two or three minutes, okay, per side. Okay, but just keep an eye on them that you don't burn them, which I probably already have done. But that's what it's all about. As you can see, my corned beef is slightly mashed down. And all I'm going to do with the corned beef now, okay, is make it flat in the pan. Okay, put two little holes. Okay, because what I want to do, I could have done with the pan a bit a little bit deeper. I'm going to put two eggs in there that are going to cook out within the corned beef, like so. Okay, so do that like so. Put that to one side. Well, this is one take only. Okay, I've not done this before. Lid on, that'll take two or three minutes. Back to the spam fritters, guys. Let's just check them, make sure they're okay. Hey, I'm all over that. Okay, this is Michelin star food. All done in about eight minutes, okay, for you, for Victory and Europe Day, here in my kitchen. I'm just gonna turn them over, okay. Get yourself involved with food. You know what, it doesn't have to be spot on at all. Okay, the important thing is, get in the kitchen, okay, fueling the body. This is a bit of a treat with the old batter, as we all know. Okay, a little bit of batter in there. You can mix the batter, okay, with a little bit of beer. So instead of using the milk, put the egg in. Okay, put a little bit of beer in there, give that a good mix. And remember a little bit of salt and pepper as well at the same time. Obviously, I could serve that with uh, homemade chips, okay, or I could serve it with mashed or peas. I'm just going to do the spam fritter and put them out into the plate. Over here, my corned beef hash is ticking along quite nicely. I don't know if you can see those eggs are starting to seal. Okay, so you've got the potatoes in there, you've got the onions, you've got the corned beef, and you've got the egg. Very much a, a big stable diet, okay, in World War II, definitely, okay. Corned beef hash, tin potatoes was certainly the way ahead. Corned beef then was mega cheap, now it's really expensive. Whatever happened there? It's about £2.99 a tin. Okay, that's in there like so. Okay, then we're going to crack on with my spam fritters. Okay, this is like your chip shop spam fritters. Okay, lovely jubbly. Okay. Just a quick recap, so hey, it's fixed here in Europe Day. We're doing this in the kitchen, I hope you're really well. And the key message is, as, well, as we all know at the moment, up the NHS, keep safe, keep your hands clean, keep distance, but also keep your mind occupied as well. Get in the kitchen, get cooking, and also as well, remember, we don't have to achieve every day, okay? It looks like everyone's achieving on social media. We don't have to achieve all the day. Have a Netflix day now and then. I had a terrible day last week, okay? I had to throw myself in a jigsaw, would you believe? Okay, which I'm still trying to do now. Right, back to my food here. Okay, the corned beef hash, okay, is just about done. I will serve that on a plate now, okay? So I'd all I'd do would be separate that, okay? And I'll try and do that in a second. Over to the corn, uh, to the spam fritters. I'm going to take one out, actually. I'm going to get a little bit of kitchen roll, okay, because I want to drain those spam fritters. Okay, I'm going to do the spam fritter, turn it over. Oh, oh, look at that, nice bit of colour as well. That's an even better one. Okay, look at that, even colour. Okay, a bit of flour, okay, a bit of egg, a bit of milk. You can use beer if you want. Flip that over as well, get that cooking. Okay, and then all I'm going to do is just check my old spam fritter. Okay, get the kitchen roll on top of that. That's looking really nice now. I can turn all this off. Okay, if I can do this in my kitchen, so can you. Get a little bit of fat off there, guys. Okay, onto the chopping board. Okay, get rid of all that. Mess everywhere. Mess in the kitchen, that's how I work. Slice them in half. Slice that in half. Look at that bad boy there. Spam fritter, let me have a little taste of that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I like that a lot. So they could be served on a plate, in half, like so. 
Okay, you can sell that with some chips, some peas, big bundle of spam fritters for the family, fantastic. Back to the corned beef hash. Okay, this is the corned beef hash, a very sort of messy dish within the pan. Our potatoes, our onions, our egg, that's all in there. I would then scoop that out onto the plate it goes, but I'm just gonna give it a little taste. I'm not gonna scoop it out now, but I will give it a little taste. Let me get a spoon, guys. Remember, always taste your food before you serve it. Actually, what I fear to forget, a little bit of Liam Perrins. Okay, that can go in like so. You can put a little, a little bit of salt and pepper on the egg. Job done. A little bit of taste. Always try your food in the pan. See what it's like before you serve it. All those onions, all those potatoes. A little taste of corned beef hash, 1945. I like that. I really do like that. Hey guys, hey girls. Okay, victory in Europe day on Friday. I hope you're really well. Okay, look after yourselves, keep clean, celebrate victory in Europe, and one day we'll celebrate victory against the virus. Thanks for listening, signing off, Mike Beaton, Royal Marines, boom. Yesterday morning at 2.41 a.m. at headquarters, General Jodl, the representative of the German High Command and Grand Admiral Dönitz, the designated head of the German state, signed the act of unconditional surrender of all German land, sea and air forces in Europe to the Allied Expeditionary Force and simultaneously to the Soviet High Command. Hostilities will end officially at one minute after midnight tonight, Tuesday, May the 8th. But in the interests of saving lives, the ceasefire began yesterday to be sounded all along the front. And our dear Channel Islands are also to be freed today. The German war is therefore at an end. After years of intense preparation, Germany hurled herself on Poland at the beginning of September 1939 and, in pursuance of our guarantee to Poland and in agreement with the French Republic, Great Britain, the British Empire and Commonwealth of Nations declared war upon this foul aggression. After gallant France had been struck down, we, from this island and from our united empire, maintained the struggle single-handed for a whole year until we were joined by the military might of Soviet Russia and later by the overwhelming power and resources of the United States of America. We may allow ourselves a brief period of rejoicing but let us not forget for a moment the toil and efforts that lie ahead. We must now devote all our strength and resources to the completion of our task, both at home and abroad. Advance Britannia. Long live the cause of freedom. God save the King. God bless you all. This is your victory. It is the victory of the cause of freedom in every land. In all our long history, we have never seen a greater day than this. Everyone, man or woman, has done their best. Everyone has tried. Neither the long years, nor the dangers, nor the fierce attacks of the enemy have in any way weakened the unbending resolve of the British nation. God bless you all. My dear friends, this is your hour. This is not victory of a party or of any class. It's a victory of the great British nation as a whole. We were the first in this ancient island to draw the sword against tyranny. After a while we were left all alone against the most tremendous military power that has been seen. We were all alone for a whole year. 
There we stood alone. Did anyone want to give in? Were we downhearted? The lights went out and the bombs came down, but every man, woman and child in the country had no thought of quitting the struggle. London can take it. So we came back after long months from the jaws of death, out of the mouth of hell, while all the world wandered. I say that in the long years to come, not only will the people of this island, but of the world, wherever the bird of freedom chirps in human hearts, look back to what we've done. And they will say, do not despair. Do not yield to violence and tyranny. March straight forward and die if need be unconquered. Tomorrow, our great Russian allies will also be celebrating victory. And after that, we must begin the task of rebuilding our health and homes. Doing our utmost to make this country a land in which we all have a chance, in which we have a duty, and we must turn ourselves to fulfill our duty to our own countrymen and to our gallant allies of the United States who were so foully and treacherously attacked by Japan. We will go hand in hand with them, even if it is a hard struggle. We will not be the ones who will fail.
This year, we find ourselves in very unprecedented times. As Mayor of Mid-East Antrim Borough, I'm encouraged by the overwhelming kindness, compassion and generosity shown by our local communities. Every Thursday evening, we have joined together with so many across the nation to pay tribute to our modern day heroes. With the NHS clap for carers, a tribute which is truly heartwarming and appreciated by so many. We also say thank you to all of our key workers who continue to deliver vital services across Mid and East Antrim and to our local community groups and volunteers who are providing support to the elderly and those most vulnerable. In recognition of the 75th anniversary of VE Day, it gives me great pride and honour to ask you as a borough to join in once more as we as a nation pay tribute to the heroes of World War II, many of whom came from the towns, villages and hamlets of Mid and East Antrim. To those who gave so much, we thank you. As Midden East Antrim veteran champion, I was delighted to propose that this council would present a silver poppy of remembrance to all surviving veterans of World War II in our borough. A special ceremony was planned to take place in the Brave Town Hall on Thursday the 7th of May to coincide with our VE Day 75 celebrations on the 8th of May 2020. Unfortunately, Due to the current coronavirus emergency, the presentation has been postponed until a time when it is safe for us all to come together again. Every year, the number of our surviving veterans is reducing, and the time to provide public and appropriate recognition is running out. It is therefore important that we mark the service of these brave war veterans who fought against fascism and Nazism so that we might enjoy the freedom and democracy we have today. Midden East Antrim Borough Council has identified a number of veterans who will receive this beautiful silver poppy which has been handcrafted here in our borough. As I said previously, the presentation ceremony has been postponed, but I am delighted that some of the veterans have agreed to share their wartime memories with us. I hope you find their World War II stories and account as interesting and inspiring as I have. In our current climate, I think we identify more than ever with a generation who lived through the Second World War and perhaps have a little more understanding of just some of the hardship which they endured. May I take this opportunity to ask you to stay safe and stay at home to help our wonderful National Health Service, as we are now in our own battle to overcome coronavirus. Let us follow the example of our World War II veterans and do what we can to come through this most difficult time. As veteran champion, I am justly proud of these remarkable men from our borough who played their part in securing victory in Europe. I look forward to a return to normality once again when we can present each of these very deserving veterans with their silver poppy, but in the meantime, allow us to share with you some of their stories from World War II. James Brennan joined the local Army Cadet Unit as a young man, which eventually led to him being recruited into the British Army just prior to the outbreak of World War II in 1939. James joined the Belfast 8th Heavy Anti-Aircraft Gun Royal Artillery Regiment 22nd Battery, which he served for the whole duration of the war. The men in the regiment had been recruited in the spring of 1939 and were each from the city and district of Belfast. Then in October 1939, 
they were posted to Cornwall and from there they embarked for France, where their first engagement against German forces took place. However, due to the overwhelming German rapid advance at the time, all British forces were urgently ordered to make an immediate retreat to Dunkirk and prepare for evacuation back to Britain. Strict headquarter orders were issued for all forces to destroy weaponry, vehicles, ammunition, everything, upon arrival at Dunkirk, thus blocking their use later by the enemy. During that very hasty retreat, the Belfast 8th, under their Belfast commander, Colonel James Cunningham, required to make a forced diversion due to a dramatic earlier incident, which was as follows. While endeavouring to escape through one French town, their lead vehicle arrived at the town square just as some German advanced motorcycle troops entered the square at the opposite side. Quickly observing this dilemma, Colonel Cunningham, in the leading Belfast 8th vehicle, ordered his driver to turn sharply left out of the square, and the regiment in their vehicles followed along swiftly behind them. The German advanced troops did not pursue the retreating regiment, but remained in the square, where they apparently had been instructed to secure it until the main German forces arrived. Meanwhile, the Belfast 8th sped quickly onwards to escape on a course towards La Havre, and from there made post haste on the route for Cherbourg. Upon safely reaching that port, they quickly observed a massive British ship berthed nearby, and the 22nd battery made immediate contact with its crew. Agreement was instantly reached through the ship's officers to have the 22nd battery's heavy guns and their specialised equipment urgently taken aboard, along with all the battalion's troops for shipment back to the British mainland. They had therefore now disobeyed the original strict order to destroy all weaponry upon reaching the French coast. The astounding consequences of that decision resulted in them being the only British troops to arrive back in Britain with both men and weapons intact. What a most breathtaking achievement that was, which resulted in all those men and heavy weapons being next engaged to defend Britain during the Battle of Britain and the London area during the London Blitz period. While one London air raid was in progress, Jim was caught out on a London bridge due to being ordered across London to deliver a dispatch, but now found himself dangerously exposed while incendiary bombs fell around him like hailstones. That's how he described that hair-raising experience. Yet he miraculously escaped without injury. High-flying German reconnaissance planes were often observed, photographing over the 8th Belfast heavy gun positions around London and the southern area. So when it was estimated that those planes had finally gone back to their base, all guns, equipment and their crews were transferred to entirely new positions in a cat and mouse game, as preparation for the appearance of the expected German bombers and their fighter escorts. One serious problem for the Belfast 8th was trying to avoid shooting down RAF aircraft during those fierce air battles, as at certain high altitudes, some planes on both sides looked quite similar. So friendly fire was a distinct hazard then too, as it still is today in current world conflicts. The next major engagement for the Belfast 8th began in 1942, when they, with their heavy weapons, embarked on the Belfast-built liner RMS Britannic for service in Burma against the Japanese, under the command of the 1st Earl Mountbatten of Burma. They became known as the Forgotten Army at one stage, but colour films shot during the conflict by the regiment's Colonel Harry Porter today provides a tremendous insight into the atrocious and difficult fighting conditions faced by all those brave men who often did not receive an adequate amount of supplies while carrying on the war against the ferocious Japanese forces. Before sailing for Burma, Colonel Porter had equipped himself with a cine camera and some reels of colour film, which accompanied him during that phase of the war. Ironically, this had resulted once more in an Ulsterman disobeying orders, as at war's end, all the film material he had recorded was confiscated by the force's censorship personnel, and cameraman Porter was threatened with court-martial proceedings. However, the Ulsterman forcefully pleaded with him not to destroy all of his precious films, but to delete anything which may have caused a security issue then return what remained. Thankfully, this request was finally agreed to, resulting today in a copy of that 35-minute amazing film record. The court-martial threat was also grudgingly cancelled. At war's end, the Belfast 8th embarked at Madras as a complete unit on the Belfast-built ship RMS Stirling Castle, which sailed to Liverpool 
and from there they journeyed by sea to the Larne port of Northern Ireland, where a large welcome home crowd had assembled for their arrival back. From there, a special train had been arranged for transporting them back to Belfast, where a hero's welcome awaited them, as they marched proudly, but in a somewhat sombre atmosphere, through the city centre streets of their beloved war-damaged Belfast, while remembering with sadness their fallen comrades now lying in far-off foreign fields. Just in the army at the time, and uh, our sergeant was a Jack Road man called Ernie Ruddick. And we're out in the range, the Lee Amphid rifles, and uh, I think it was a Scots fella. No, no, no one. But anyway, he was standing with the rifles. We were told to put one up under the breach, you see. So I put one up under the breach, but the boy beside me, whatever happened, and he put one up the breach and pressed the trigger. <laughs> and Ernie Ruddick, the sergeant, the instructor, there, he got shot. Part of the shoe, just the, the left hand side of his shoe, it's a big toe. Yep. Didn't touch the big toe, but it took the ladder off his boot. You know? Yep. I thought that was funny. But Ernie caught me laughing at him. <laughs> I'd be marked out, boy, he says, I'd be marked out. Right. You watch yourself from now on. Yep. No more laughing, things like that. <laughs> you know? Very I good. thought that was <laughs> yep. funny, you know? Where, when I was in the UDR and you let one off accidentally, it cost you a hundred pound out of your wages at the end of the month, you're probably getting about 300 quid. Well, I think probably for a hundred pound then, I would have had to serve a big two years in the army. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling you. you know? yep. I don't know what the setup was in the army now, like. Yep. By, the, by the loan or pay for it or what, you know, but then, you got your three beats a day. You had a uniform. And I think it was, what was it? Half a crown a day or something. Yeah. Twelve and a half p today's money. Yep. Half a dollar, you know, mm -hmm. a quarter of a dollar. And uh, <clears throat> every fair when you got your money, you see, uh, you're a millionaire for about half an hour. You know? yep. But what I used to like about part of it was uh, the nafe. You know, you remember the nafe, you got a very, very cheap meal. But I remember one time, well, what I used, I used to like doing it because you used to get a meal for nothing after nine o'clock when it closed, you see. Right. The Navy Army and Air Force stores, they called it, you know, but yep. it's just an offer. And uh, <clears throat> I used to like doing off the NCO because I say you got a good meal nine o'clock when they closed the doors, you see. Right. And I, I always look forward to that, you yep. know. Yeah, that was one of the, the perks. terrible appetite then, you yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Walking 10 or 15, 20 miles, nothing, no, you just did it, you know. Yeah. But uh, enjoyable, I enjoyed every minute of it. I enjoyed every minute of it, you know. And uh, mostly good times, you know, but there were bad times too, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, you've, you've, you've told me a few of them stories yeah, before, so you know. have, and I don't, uh, and I don't want to take you there the day again, rough. so don't there. Um, some very rough times, 
But most of it was all right, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some of it was rough. Lost good friends. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's it. That will never come back. Didn't. Yeah. Some of them never come home to fond fairs. They dump their kit bag down at the door, kiss their wives, and let the children rustle them down to the kitchen floor. Switch the tally on, pour out a whiskey, search for the local football score. Some of them skip the, the quayside welcome, dodge the bunting on cannonade, make their landfall and silent harbours. Not, not to the Coast Guards, but if you the searchlight of public scrutiny that goes engaged in the smuggling trade. Some of them land at lonely airfields, far removed from the celebrations, hang their flying kit on a locker, catch a lift to a railway station, make for home and take for granted the certain of thanks of a grateful nation. Some of them missed the Royal Salute, the victory parade along the mall, the fly past, the ships in formation passing the cheering crowds on the harbour wall. Remembered only by friends and relatives, some of them never came home at all. I am Alderman Noel Williams, former RAF Wing Commander and Chairman of the Royal Air Forces Association's Northern Ireland Regional Committee. It is my pleasure to introduce this musical tribute to the Royal Air Force's successes in World War II. The RAF participated in many operations throughout the world during World War II, but nowhere was its role more prominent and important than in 1940, when, in its finest hour, it won the Battle of Britain. After defeating the Luftwaffe, the Royal Air Force went on to prevent 
the German seaborne invasion of the United Kingdom by destroying the barges and landing craft they had been assembling. Of the Royal Air Force's successes in battle, Prime Minister Winston Churchill was moved to say, never in the face of human conflict has more been owed by so many to so few. At the time World War II ended, the Royal Air Force had 963,000 personnel, with 153,000 women in the Women's Auxiliary Air Force. Many of these brave men and women came from the towns and villages across Mid and East Antrim. To everyone we say our grateful thanks. In a moment, I will introduce the band of the RAF Regiment. But first, the RAF Association's old. In friendship and in service, one to another, we are pledged to keep alive the memory of those who died in the service of the Royal Air Force and the Air Forces of the Commonwealth. In their name, we give ourselves to this noble cause. Proudly and thankfully, we will remember them. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce the band of the Royal Air Force Regiment, conducted by their Director of Music, Flight Lieutenant Tom Roda, who will perform Michael Kamen's evocative composition, Band of Brothers.
cry for peace around the world. Oh yay, oh yay, oh yay. Citizens, one and all, please join this cry for peace that you now hear from me. Remember men and women, old and young, who died to make us free. The women left at home did not just sit and wait. They toiled in harsh conditions before dawn to very late. Factories, farms, other essential jobs, the women were quick at learning. They worked, some died, to keep the home fires burning. As we remember this special day, do not forget that every day someone needs your aid. Do not put away your poppies, letting your memories fade. Celebrate with the knowledge that VE Day is also a time to remember. Beyond the solemn wreaths of the 11th of November, let us thank all those who have gone before with their colours proudly unfurled. Join us as united we say, peace to the world. God save the Queen. I hope you're all enjoying our day of virtual commemoration and celebration, marking 75 years since the end of World War II, and thank you for joining us for the bells ringing out for peace. The sound of bells is deeply rooted in our culture, providing the soundtrack to historic moments, calling us to pray, to work, to arms, to come together in times of crisis, and of course, to celebrate. Our peal of bells this evening is of great significance, because on the 8th of May 1945, church bells, which had lain silent throughout the long years of war, rang out across our land once more to celebrate peace and victory in Europe. Some church bells rang for more than five hours to welcome that hard-fought victory. While we are facing our own difficulties with the current pandemic, we must not forget the sacrifices of those who fought so valiantly in World War II. We will now showcase a number of our churches from across Mid and East Antrim as they ring their bells, reminiscent of the celebratory church bells of 1945. Let the bells ring once more in Mid and East Antrim and beyond in celebration of the victory in Europe and the peace and friendships we enjoy today. to know that is 
Off the shoulders the for which they're made That's we're all set to win And I'll tell you all about the job that I am in Oh, when the lads of the village get cracking And the whole world too turns out Off we go, rain or snow just like we were soldiers all in a row Had to pull on the right We stayed overnight And the barmaid smiled at me I brought my pyjamas Now don't say a word I used to be a boy's girl And so I get prepared Oh, when the lights of the village Get dragging Down the road to victory To the lords of Timbuktu There's an ever-spreading rumor About a sailor with eyes of blue He causes great commotion With his eyes that match the ocean He's listed in the nautical who's who Who's got girls in every port Hanging around like flies Yo ho 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 Oh, sailor with the navy blue eyes Who's the guy they love to buy dozens of socks and ties? Yo ho 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 ho! Oh, the sailor with the navy blue eyes. When the boat comes home after crossing the fall, he's still at sea, thinking, wondering, who's he gonna take? Rowing on the lake. Who's the guy who's got a job waving the most goodbyes? Yo ho 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 ho! Oh, the sailor with the navy blue eyes. Who's got girls in every port hanging around like flies? Yo ho 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 ho! When they light up Piccadilly, 
The whole ecstatic population will be canned, canned, canned. Through our gins and Angostorus, we'll see little pelvic fioras Heidi Heiling from the circus to the strand, strand, strand. Heidi Heiling from the circus to the strand.
tributes to the millions. Let us remember those who selflessly gave their lives at home and abroad, whose sacrifice enables us to enjoy the peace and the freedom we have today. Let us remember those who came home wounded physically and mentally, and friends and family who cared for them. Let us remember those who returned to restore their relationships and rebuild their working lives after years of dreadful conflict and turmoil. Let us remember the families that lost husbands, sons and sweethearts. Let us remember the servicemen, merchant seamen, miners, brave civilians, and others from the Commonwealth and Allied countries who fought, suffered and died during several years of war. Let us remember those in reserved occupations, the brave people who kept us safe on the home front, the doctors and nurses who cared for the wounded, the women and men who toiled in the fields, those who worked in the factories, who all played such a vital role in the war effort at home.